anyone else? this which is a 360 view so you can see me I'm in front of the robot so I'm in the center and then uh, you can see the bar on the right hand side which is right behind the robot so um, this thing over here that's the mount 
for the Christmas tournament. Um, what this is called is Omnivision, I guess what everybody calls it. Um, and we just do a polar unwrap on it, and then I crop the image, and uh, so it, so the robot only gets to see a certain amount as opposed to everything. Um, and it changes. Whoops, full screen does not look good. But you can see it right here where it's like cropped it, so you don't see the top, you don't see the bottom as much. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the motors on the robot, so then what it's going to do is it's going to look for red objects based on um, this thing called, we filtered just red objects, so there's the red objects that it sees right now, um, which is too many, but uh, we'll combine all those into one object. Then it does the center gravity module, which what this does is it draws a box around red objects, because that's what we chose, and it's, it's going to be a green box, and you can change a bunch of variables. Right now it sees too many red objects, so it's, it doesn't want to draw a box around one single object. And then we did DB script um, to actually drive the motors based on that center of gravity uh, module. So when it's when the red object's to the left, the robot turns to the left, and it's to the right, the robot turns to the right. Pretty, pretty simple. Um, and that code just is its statements. Um, pretty much the center of gravity module. If it's greater than 15, then turn left, and stuff like that. So. It looks more complex than it is, really. It's really easy. Um, um, VBScript, Python, I think they have a Java, and you can do uh, API, so you can do C++ if you know how to pipeline it into Rebel Realms. So it's really versatile, and you can do pretty much any language you want. And really what this uh, box does, with some of gravity, is it takes all the red objects in the complete image and centers it. So it's, it's not necessarily doesn't know where to go if there's too many objects, but it does is it takes the, um, the, all the objects, and find the center, so if you have an object here, an object here, an object here, it's going to go in the center. And then it also would change the cog size, which basically the, the image size that it sees it. And with those two variables, you can determine um, not only where the image is, but how far it is. Because the closer you get, obviously the more image is going to be apparent, so the cog size will get larger. So you get like um, three dimensions. <coughs> Yeah, you can do YMX coordinates and you can do, uh, for how big the object is, if it's closer to it, it'll back up. If it's further away, it'll go forward, which is what we did. Um, go ahead and set it up and let's do some red tracking. I've got it turned on. So if you want to combine all the cups. And we can see somebody in red will notice if you're watching the video that it watches. Um, with Rubble Realms, I could have it set up to where it would show the video that the robot sees, or you can just see the video that comes straight out of the robot. Um, I think I'll just do that. If you see the screen box, it's kind of looking for red objects. There might be more on the screen. Let's see what we've got. There's a little bit to the left. If you see this is the red object that it sees, we filtered out um, all the other red objects, and then uh, it'll track that, and it'll move the robot visually if it wants to do it. Okay, that's too close to it. So. But we built this in a couple weeks, so it's still on the very basic, but it, it moves. Um, well, right now what it's doing is it's going to stop, turn left, go forward, um, but we could do a formula so that it follows a curve and like would turn directly towards the object instead of stopping and going forward. It's not very impressive on this, but uh, I think it's low. is it the light or what? It might be the motors, the batteries might be low, are the batteries low or? No, I think they're pretty fresh, but so that's kind of a... I've got a spotlight. Okay, so it sees it, and now it's backing up because of it, and then pull it away from it, and let's see what it does. Yeah, so it's it's tracking. It's just being and pretty slow at the moment. Also, like you were saying, we have these motors turned down really low, so we it's want not going to gonna attack the, the cup. It's basically going um, very slow so it can follow it in a steady pattern. The faster you turn the motors, the better your code has to be to compensate. Would it be faster it has nothing to do with code, it's how you write the code. Like right now we have the code written for it to go slow. We can have this robot go faster, but the faster you go, the better processing you need. Is um like right now the frames per second are, are pretty low. Yeah. So that means that basically his computer is not able to you know kick it to they can't compute that 30. data. What what should the optimal setting in my opinion probably be thirty frames per second. Right. So I mean with Obviously, if you have any understanding of like frames per second, the lower you have, the less it sees. So if I if it's 30 frames per second and I go really fast, like like over here, it can see that. But nine frames per second, it's going to see here, here, and here. So in increments. 
Actually, if you get to about 15, you'll be doing okay. Yeah. yeah. 24 is actually optimal. 30 is almost good. Well, I'm saying if you had that really going fast, I would think that 30 frames. And another thing, yeah. too, is um, also the only thing that I've noticed that you may have noticed with uh, vision processing, obviously, the it's important how much light you have and how good your vision is as far as like resolution. Contrast is important. Contrast is also important. Right. Okay. So, well, the reason you, the, the, there's a lot of stuff going on.